Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to my walkthrough of the 2020 Sans Holiday Hack. In the previous video, we saw a few indications that Jack Frost is up to mischief here in Santa's castle. Let's see if anything becomes clearer with our next objective. We need to help Sugar Plum Mary with finding a password for a point of sale terminal. Let's go find her. As we enter the castle, we pick up a piece of broken candy cane. I guess that'll come in use at some point later on. Within the main entry hall, we bump into Santa again, who tells us about this painting he anonymously received in the post. It looks a bit... odd to me, but we'll come back to that later. One of his elves mentions that Santa has been acting strangely recently, delaying or cancelling projects, and fiddling with the technical infrastructure at the North Pole. No doubt Mr Frost is behind this. We'll grab this hex nut that is just lying on the floor, and then head out back. Over in the courtyard is a green light bulb that also goes into our inventory, and none other than Jack Frost himself, who makes a comment about the painting in Santa's hallway. It sounds like perhaps he was the one who sent it. No doubt we'll uncover more soon, but for now we must speak with Sugar Plum, who suggests we should start by completing the Linux Primer terminal. This terminal is designed to provide a brief introduction to basic Linux commands, whilst hunting down munchkins within the system. We're first asked to undertake a directory listing, which can be achieved with the ls command. Next, we need to find the munchkin which is hiding within this file. The file command is useful here again to know what sort of format the file is in. It's plain text, so it can just be printed with the cat command, which exposes the munchkin within. Next, we're asked to delete this munchkin, which can be achieved with the rm command. Next, we must print the path to the current directory, which requires a call to pwd. Apparently there's another munchkin hiding somewhere here, but a directory listing with ls shows nothing. We need to add the "-a option to also show hidden files, those beginning with a dot, which exposes the hidden munchkin. The next munchkin is in our command history, which can be printed with history. Here we see all the commands we've typed so far, along with the hidden munchkin, a command which was run in a previous logon session. There's also another munchkin in our environment variables, a set of data about the current session, user and system. They can be displayed using the env command, and there's our munchkin. Next we need to head into the workshop. ls showed a folder of this name, and we can change into it using cd. One of the files here contains a munchkin, but a directory listing shows far too many to manually search, so we must use grep to track it down. The dash i option signifies our search is to be non-case sensitive, and dash e specifies the text that we want to look for. Dash r tells grep that we want to recursively search through files, and we specify the current directory, signified as a single dot, as the starting point. With that munchkin uncovered, we must start the Lollipop Engine program. Launching apps is usually as easy as typing in the name, but this particular command is not found in any of the usual app locations, which would be specified using the path environment variable that we saw earlier. We can force the shell to look in the current folder for the app by prefixing the command with dot slash. And now we're given a permission denied. That means the file is here, but we're not allowed to run it. Running ls with the dash l option provides a long format directory listing, which includes the permissions associated with the file. And sure enough, no users have execute permissions to run the code. We can adjust this with the chmod command, specifying plus x to add the execute permission. Another ls shows the permissions have been updated, so we can run the code again by specifying its name. Our next task is to go to the electrical folder, using cd, and rename a file. This is achieved with the mv command, short for move. The first argument is the source, and the second the destination. We're then asked to create a symbolic link, which is like a shortcut from one place of a file system to another. The ln tool is used for this, and we must specify the dash s option to request a symbolic or soft link rather than a hard link. The next argument is the file which is being linked to, 
and the final argument is the name of the link. Now, fuse1 points to the contents of fuse0. Next, we need to make a copy of that file, using cp, short for copy. The first argument is the source, the second the destination. We're about two thirds of the way through this exercise now. We're asked to add some text into the file fuse2. There's many different possible text editors which can do this, but I choose nano. After making the change, exit by pressing Ctrl X, making sure we answer yes to saving changes. Our next munchkin is hiding somewhere in opt munchkin den, so we can change folder there and list files. Nothing obvious jumps out, so let's use the find command to search the contents of the current folder, again signified by a single dot, where the file name contains the word munchkin somewhere in it. No results are returned, so we can expand the search to be case insensitive by using the dash i name option instead of dash name. And there's our munchkin. The next munchkin is a file which is owned by a user called munchkin. We can again use the find command, this time with the dash user option. Our next munchkin is even more specific, a file within a certain size range. Here, multiple size options are specified. The first to identify files that are 108 kilobytes or greater, and the second files of 110 kilobytes or smaller. Only a few more to go. We now need to track down which port number a munchkin process is listening on. We can see a list of running processes using the ps command, along with the dash a option to show all processes. And there's the munchkin process. The netstat command is really useful to show the status of all network connections, and for this question we want to specify the dash l option to only show network sockets which are listening for connections. Next, we must interact with the web server running on this port, which is most easily achieved using the curl command, specifying that we want to connect to the local machine on port 54321. Our final task is to terminate this process, which can be achieved with the kill command. We must tell kill which process to target, and we saw from the previous call to PS that the target process is running as process ID number 8921. With the final question complete, we can chat with Sugarplum again for a few hints for the main objective. To recap, we must find the password for the point of sale terminal. If we try to access it, we can see that it's locked out, although we do have the option of grabbing a copy of the exe file for analysis. Given that's all we're provided with, chances are the password is hard-coded somewhere in here. A closer examination using the file command indicates that this is a self-extracting installer. A number of tools are available to extract the contents without us having to run the exe in a Windows environment, including 7-zip and the archive manager installed by default on this Kali system. Within are a number of DLLs associated with the installer, and a 7-zip formatted archive with the application contents. A hint from Sugarplum suggested this is an Electron app. Electron apps are built using JavaScript, HTML and CSS, making it easy to write apps that work across multiple platforms. These resources all get bonded up together into a package in the ASAR format. Amongst the files in the 7-zip archive is the ASAR package for this app. We can extract it with a simple drag and drop. In order to dig deeper into this package, we must use the ASAR tool, which can be installed via npm. We also need to create a folder to place the extracted content into before running the extract process. Quite a few files are produced, and searching through them manually isn't much fun, so let's use grep to do the hard work. This returns several lines which contain the word password, including one here in main.js which appears to be the password. This assertion is backed up by a line in readme.md which also points to this location. With the password identified as SantaPass, we can head back to our badge and submit the answer. 
That's all for this video, but leave a comment if you have any questions, or if you have used a different method for solving any of these puzzles. We'll pick up the story again in part 4, where we'll try to get the elevator working so we can explore some other areas of the castle. Feel free to take a slight detour on your way, and check out some of my other cybersecurity videos, otherwise I'll see you there.